So we have proved that every Huffman code is optimal, but the converse is not true. Not every optimal code is a Huffman code. Now, one example of this, it would be to construct a uniquely decodable code that's optimal, but is not Huffman. So that would be, that would be an example illustrating that not every optimal uniquely decodable code is a Huffman code. But it's also true that not every optimal prefix code is a Huffman code. So that's an even stronger statement. Not every optimal, let's make that, let's state that. So also true, not every optimal prefix code is Huffman. So let me first give you an example of this one. This is, it's pretty easy. Well, they're both not too hard to come up with examples of, but the first one is, is you know, take any, any, um, well, maybe not any code, but take our little example here, like this one, one, uh, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, one. We know this was, this was optimal for these probabilities. And this is a prefix code. In fact, it's a, it's a Huffman code, but we can easily transform this into a suffix code which is not a prefix code but has the same length so if we make this we just flip if we just reverse these so this would be zero zero one zero one 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 this is no longer a prefix code but it's it's a suffix code uh, no code word is a suffix of another and um, and therefore it's still uniquely decodable and obviously has the same lengths. So this is a, an optimal uniquely decodable code. It, it is not a Huffman code because every Huffman code is a prefix code. That's, you know, that's basically, you know, by the construction, you have some probabilities and then you, you begin combining them and you always get a tree. And, um, and so therefore it's a, and the code words are on the, the leaves of the tree. So Huffman always gives you a prefix code. And so therefore, this is not a Hoffman code. All right, so what's an example of the second one of, of a prefix code, an optimal prefix code that is not a Hoffman code? So maybe before I give you the example, let me draw the picture. Since we've got all these different sets of things lying around, let's draw a picture of the, the implications. <clears throat> so we earlier, we had our, our picture of, maybe I'll just do it here. So we had, um, all the codes and then we had uniquely decodable and then we had prefix and now we're going to have Huffman. So Huffman, Huffman is in here. And then we have prefix. Every Huffman code is a prefix code. And then, let me, I'll scooch down. And then every prefix code is uniquely decodable. And then we had all codes sitting out here. So what I'm saying, what I'm stating, my, what I'm claiming here can be illustrated in the following way. So <clears throat> let's draw the set of optimal codes. So optimal codes are going to look something like this, you know, just abstractly speaking. So we prove that every Huffman code, maybe I'll put O, O for optimal. So these are optimal. The set of optimal codes looks looks something like this. Every Huffman code is optimal, so it's in this optimal set here. And um, so for let's see, so for this part here, the, there are prefix codes which are not optimal. That's that's fairly obvious. You know, just make any old long you know bad prefix code that that is not optimal. And there are uniquely decodable codes that are that are non-optimal and non-prefix. That's fairly clear. And um, what I'm claiming, well, the example of the first thing, not every optimal, not every optimal uniquely decodable code is a Huffman code. So, not, so that's this little part out here, that there are optimal uniquely decodable codes that are not Huffman codes. And and in this case, of so this little part, this would be that are also not prefix codes, like the example we just gave. This one here, this was a this was not a prefix code. This was a suffix code. Uh, a, another statement, uh, the, this sort of inside here, is that what I'm saying here: that not every optimal prefix code 
is a is a Huffman code. So here we have some things which are prefix, but are not Huffman. Okay, so hopefully that makes the implications clear. And so what's an example? What's an example of, of this? So I, I thought about this for a minute and, and came up with the following example. So let's take the following for our P's. Let's say we have 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and point, actually let me move those down a little bit, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2. And when we do the Huffman thing, so we, we have to combine these. We have no option. We get 0.4. And now we have to combine the 0.3s. We have no choice. We get 0.6, and then we combine 6 and 4, and we get 1. So if we write down, if we were to label these, of course, you can label them however you want. You wouldn't have to go 0, 1. You could go 1, 0, and you could flop any of these back and forth, but this is one way to do it. Um, uh, so just to give an example, another way would have been, you know, even though we didn't have any choice in the how we connected the tree, we could have also put 1, 0 here, and that would give us the following Huffman code, 1, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1. And, you know, of course, there's going to be, like, whatever. I just, like, um, you could flip any of these back and forth. And, um, you know, independently. So I guess there's, what, you know, two, two ways, two ways times two. So, so there's, like, eight. So there's eight different Huffman codes. But all of them have the property that the first bit of the code word, or the first you know, uh, the first symbol in in the code word for one of these three, one of the point threes, like here, is opposite. It's well, it's the same for the point threes, and it's opposite from the first symbol for the point twos. So you know, you're going to have to put a one here and a zero here, or a zero here and a one here. So the point threes are always going to have the same first symbol, and the point twos are always going to have the same the the other first symbol. However, you can just permute the code words in a, in a different way and and get something which does not have that property but has all it's it's still a prefix code and has all the same lengths and so therefore it, it's still optimal so what's an example so let's do an example so let's take this first one here and permute its uh, code word so let's just let's just permute let's just transpose these so let's say if instead of uh, so let's well I'll just write it up here maybe so let's say, let's say that, good color. We just keep zero, zero, and then we move one, zero over, and then we have zero, one, and one, one. Now this is clearly still a prefix code because the original one was, all the lengths are the same, but it does not have that property that point that the point threes have the same first symbol and it's opposite from the point two. So therefore this one here, is still optimal and it's a prefix code but it's not a Huffman code so optimal so this is optimal prefix but not Huffman all right so that was just a simple example to illustrate illustrate the the implications of in this in this diagram.